Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at a practical where you can measure the rate of photosynthesis. Don't forget to help you answer exam questions on this. I have written you a load of load of questions and put them all in a workbook. There is a combined science one and then separate science ones for all the different subjects. The required practicals are a massive 15% of your GCSE, so it is well worth making sure you know them all really, really well. This practical we're going to be looking at our photosynthesis practical so I've got my uh, pond weed here which we need 10 centimeters of I've got my funnel and that's what I'm gonna put over the pond weed I'm also gonna put some um, little rest little plasticine rests on the bottom of the funnel so that it's not sitting directly on the bottom but is resting on those and then I'm gonna put a measuring cylinder over the top to catch any gas that's released. For this, you are going to need 10 centimeters of freshly cut pond weed. So here is my pond weed. There is 10 centimeters. I'm going to cut it there. And when you do the practical, you want the freshly cut end to be poking upwards in the um, funnel. Into the water, I'm going to put the pond weed and the funnel. If you find your pond weed floats around too much and the right end isn't sticking up the right way, then you can secure it a little bit with um, some plasticine and hold it down. But the pond weed naturally wants to poke up the end there. Now, we are not expecting to collect a large volume of um, gas from this, so you need to decide which is going to be the most appropriate measuring cylinder to actually use. And the most appropriate one is going to be the smallest one here. So I'm going to use the 10 centimeter cubed measuring cylinder. I'm just going to fill this up with water and then I'm going to invert it over the top of the funnel. I've got my funnel over the top of the flask. You can see that there's a gap at the top of the measuring cylinder. This is absolutely fine. There are two different ways of doing this experiment. We can count the bubbles being released or we can record the volume being released. So this, we just need to make notes of what the starting volume is and what the final volume is so that we can make notes of any volume of gas released. We can now introduce our light source and we have our meter ruler here. And what we're going to be doing is sequentially moving the distance from the pondweed to the light source. I'm going to start off with it quite close. Now I've got the light source on, I can record it for 15 minutes. In photosynthesis, we have plants taking up water and carbon dioxide and converting that into glucose and oxygen. To do this, they use the energy from the sun. They need light for this to happen, but this has to be written not in the equation, generally written above the arrow because it is neither a reactant nor a product. For this reaction, you also have to know the chemical equation. So water plus carbon dioxide, turns into not an equals an arrow glucose c6 h12 o6 plus oxygen you have to be able to balance it but it's fairly easy to remember this one six 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 there are a few things that can affect the rate of photosynthesis so they're going to be light intensity concentration of the um, reactants carbon dioxide and water and temperature as we increase light intensity, the rate of photosynthesis is going to increase, but only up to a point. And at that point, other things will become limiting factors. The graph looks the same for carbon dioxide concentration and for water concentration, but looks slightly different for temperature as there is going to be an optimal temperature that photosynthesis works out at. And for more information on this, you need to go and look at the enzyme section. This, if you are plotting a final um, value, so the number of bubbles or the volume of gas collected, then the best thing to do would be a bar chart. 
If you have recorded the number of bubbles or the volume of gas every minute, then the best thing to do would be a line graph. You can see here that there is a clear link between the distance between the light source and the um, plant and the number of bubbles. The closer the light source, the higher the light intensity, the higher the rate of photosynthesis and the more bubbles, the more gas is released. Now at each point here, if you're just counting the number of bubbles, you've got no idea what the actual volume of gas in that bubble is. And the volume of gas released here is always going to be very, very small. For this practical, our independent variable would be the distance between the light and the plant weed our dependent variable, the bit that we're measuring, is either going to be the number of bubbles or the volume of gas released. Control variables are going to be things like temperature, the type of pond weed you use, the um, length of pond weed that you use. There are quite a lot of control variables for this. When we're thinking about our risk assessment, we have water, which could fall on the floor, we could slip on, so telling your teacher or clearing up quickly. We have glass which again could fall on the floor and break, in which case you should tell your teacher quickly and they will clear it up. And we have electricity and in combination with water, this can be very dangerous. If we're thinking about alternatives, you can switch between measuring the um, volume of gas produced or the number of bubbles released. There aren't any equations or units. Calculations, they might ask you to do something about rates. We've gone over the method. I've shown you a graph for this and we've gone over the equipment.